A couple of days ago, we reached out to you, our Mac Rumors viewers and readers, on social media asking about your favorite or your top Mac OS tips. And we got a lot of very common and basic tips that everyone should probably know. And then we got a few that I didn't even know and they kind of blew my mind. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of the best tricks that you guys have recommended and some that I've discovered over the years of using Mac OS and some that I just learned about over these last couple of days while making this video. So there's tips and tricks for everyone, whether you're a basic user, intermediate or advanced, here are 25 of those tips and tricks for your Mac. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Our first tip is pretty easy. It's one that I think a lot of people really do know, but a lot of you guys also commented that this was your best or favorite tip, so we figured why not include it. If you wanna switch between open applications quickly and easily, all you have to do is press Command plus Tab. Now, if you keep holding down Command and you just keep tapping on the Tab key, you'll cycle between the different applications that are open. Letting go of the keys will then switch you to that app that's currently highlighted. Taking things one step further here, if you are finished with a certain app and would like to close it right from the app switcher, simply press the Q key with Command held down and it will close that app. Hot Corners is a feature that I think most people also know about, but it's been around for quite a bit and I think it's a very underrated and important feature. Go to System Preferences, select Mission Control, and then Hot Corners in the bottom left. From here, you can set up multiple functions or tasks to be carried out whenever your mouse hovers over that specific corner. You can have Launch Mission Control whenever you hover your mouse over the top right corner, or Shove Desktop, Activate the Screensaver, and much more. Now, here's an advanced Hot Corners tip. If it becomes a bit annoying that your screensaver is coming on, every time you hover your mouse in that corner, try going back to the Hot corner settings, and then before you click on the preferred corner and set it to how you want it, hold down the Option key. This time, every time you go to that corner, nothing will happen until you hold down the Option key first in order to activate that Hot Corner. Most of you probably know how to hide a current window, but just in case you don't, it's Command plus H. Instead of minimizing the app, the app just disappears, and then it can be brought back by either simply clicking on the icon in your dock or switching back to it by using the Command plus Tab tip that we talked about earlier. If you wanna cycle between a specific app's windows, maybe you're writing a note and you wanna reference another note that's open in the background and hiding, simply press Command plus the tilde key which is the key above the tab and underneath the escape key. And you can quickly switch between app windows. We made an entire video about this next tip called stacks, but just in case you are still rocking an extremely messy desktop, simply right click wherever there's a bit of space on your desktop and select use stacks. Your files will auto magically be grouped by file type, all neatly arranged for you on the right side of your desktop. If you press Shift Command 3, that will take a screenshot. You probably already knew that. And then Shift Command 4 will take a screenshot, but you have to select the area that you want. But if you press Shift Command 5, you now have an option to quickly record your screen or a portion of your screen. It comes in handy for me, especially when I'm making videos like this one. Speaking of screenshots, if you want a clean looking screenshot of a specific app window, your wallpaper, dock, menu bar, etc go ahead and press Shift-Command-4 and then press the space bar. Your cursor will turn into a camera icon and you'll be able to take a clean screenshot of your menu bar, your dock, specific window, etc. In Safari, Picture-in-Picture Picture is starting to work with a lot more sites out there. And more specifically, with YouTube, all you have to do to bring up Picture-in-Picture Picture is right-click on the video two times to bring up a secondary menu that offers the Picture-in-Picture Picture feature. Now, that previous tip doesn't work for every website, but this next tip might help you out. If you have a video playing, look up at your toolbar for the audio icon. Then, right-click on that icon, and you should be able to enter into picture-in-picture -picture mode from there. If you have a Force Touch trackpad or a MacBook with a Force Touch trackpad, there are a few neat tricks that you can do using the Force Touch gesture. For example, if you're inside of YouTube, you can force touch a video thumbnail and it will launch a quick look version of that video, allowing you to actually check out and watch the video without leaving your current page. This works with website links too. See a word you're not familiar with? Well, you probably know that you can highlight that word and then right click and select look up. However, if you just simply force touch that word, this feature happens instantly. One last force touch tip that I personally like 
is the ability to rename folders and files quickly by simply force touching the file name. Now it's important that you actually touch the file text, not the icon, because if you do that with the folder icon, it will actually just give you a preview or a quick look of that folder. So it won't change the text. You have to actually make sure you're force touching the text name itself. Your Apple Watch can unlock your Mac, which is an amazing feature, but you might already know that. In macOS Catalina, your Apple Watch can do a little bit more than just unlock, but it can also confirm passwords so that you don't have to keep typing them in. It's super useful for those who don't have Touch ID built into their Mac. So head into System Preferences, under Security and Privacy, make sure the Unlock Apps and Mac with Apple Watch box is checked in order to enable that feature. Navigating through files on your desktop using the arrow keys is pretty cool and very basic. However, if you wanna open up a folder using your keyboard rather than clicking on it, you can actually use Command and then press the down key to open a folder. And if you wanna get out of that folder, just press Command and up key to go back to where you came from. I think this next tip might be pretty well known, but a lot of you out there commented about it. So again, why not mention it here? Command Space brings up Spotlight. If you didn't already know that, now your life is changed forever. Spotlight can easily help you search for files, folders, open up apps, websites, etc. What you might not know is that you can also convert currencies on the spot or even do basic math with a built-in calculator function all within Spotlight. If you're a multiple desktop user, you might not know that you can easily switch between those desktops by pressing control and either the left or right arrow. I personally forget about this shortcut all the time, and it even works with full screen apps. So I usually use the swipe gesture on my trackpad, but if you don't have a trackpad or you just forget, you can actually just do control and use the left or right arrow key to switch between those desktops. Speaking of tips that I forgot about or I even didn't know, here are some of the more advanced tips for macOS. Option plus command plus delete on a selected file or folder will delete it permanently, meaning that you can't go back and find it in the trash bin. Just poof, it's gone forever. Might be helpful if you really know for sure that you never want to see that file again and you don't want to have to undo your trash bin. Option plus click on the notification center icon in the top right corner of your screen. It will now be grayed out, meaning you just turned on Do Not Disturb. I absolutely had no idea about this whatsoever, but I'm really happy that I do now. This one is a stretch for most of you out there, but there's no reason not to turn this on in my opinion, especially if you're using a wireless mouse that could potentially die at any moment. Head into Settings, Accessibility, and then under Pointer Control, select Alternate Control Methods tab. Then next to Enable Mouse Keys, select the options, and check the first box. What this does is whenever you press the option key five times in a row, this will then enable mouse keys functionality and then you can use the number keys on a keyboard with a dedicated number pad to move your mouse cursor around your Mac. If you don't have dedicated number pad, use seven, eight, and nine in the surrounding keys around it and it will operate the same way. If you hold down option while pressing one of the function keys like for mission control, brightness, media controls, etc., you'll automatically be taken to the corresponding settings menu inside of system preferences for those specific keys. If you wanna easily create and duplicate a file every time you click on a specific file, all you have to do is right click and select get info, then check stationary pad box. Whenever you open up that file, a duplicate version will automatically be opened instead. This is perfect for quick templates of specific documents. Remember earlier when I said Command H will automatically hide your currently opened application? Well, Option Command H will actually hide every other window around the app that's currently open. Finally, our last tip is one that might not be too advanced, but I always forget it's a thing. If you wanna copy the link that's currently showing in your browser's navigation bar, instead of going up to the browser and double clicking and then hitting Command C or right clicking and copying if that's how you do it, just hit Command L and then to copy it, Command C. It's much faster than using your mouse in my opinion. So that's it. These are our current tips and tricks that some of you may or may not know. And if you happen to know all of them, then you're probably a Mac genius. And I'd really hope that you'd leave me a tip that I might not know in the comment section down below so that we can maybe feature it in an upcoming video. Thanks so much for watching everyone. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors, and I hope to see you around in the next video.